Hello friends, welcome to This Day in Jack Benny. I'm John Henderson. This episode is from March 14th, 1948. Sponsored by Lucky Strike Cigarettes. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. L.A. Foley, this old American. And Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 49, out of 49, American. Also on the radio, you could hear Truth or Consequences, sponsored by Does Soap. D-U-Z, D-U-Z. When you does your wash, you'll see. Previously, the host Ralph Edwards held a contest where you had to guess a secret celebrity. And the latest was The Walking Man. Yes, all right, this is Ralph Edwards of Truth or Consequences. Tell us who you think is The Walking Man. Jack Benny is correct, and you win the giant Jack Benny! Come away there, my dear. Hey. A Chicago housewife, I suppose. How do you feel, Mrs. Hubbard? You work for the best firm in Chicago, you say? What is it? Carson something. Oh, oh, a department store, Carson Perry Scott and Company. Are you a sales clerk there? Uh, all right. Now, t- take it easy. Take it easy. Well, that's a girl. All right. Now, are you married? You're a widow. Uh, we, we want all the nation, too, to hear the walking man's own feelings about this, so we'll hear about you in detail next week on Truth or Consequences. Mrs. Hubbard, is that all right? You will have to ask Carson Perry and stop. Yes, I know. Uh, but I mean, if they say it's okay... Now, don't go away, because I'm going to bring in the walking man, Jack Benny, in just one second. Now, hang on. Uh, Come in, Jack. Yes. Um, Jack. Jack. You can talk now, Jack. Look, they know who you are. Jack. Jack, look, the contest is over. You can stop walking. Thank goodness, my feet are killing me. <laughs> well, well, Jack, it's all over. Wasn't it a wonderful experience? The whole country was trying to guess the identity of the walking man. On everybody's lips, it was, who is the walking man? Who is the walking man? And just imagine, it was you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I knew it all the time, Ralph. Uh, what do you think of uh, Mrs. Uh, Hubbard winning all those prizes? Isn't it exciting? Hmm. What's the matter, Jack? Don't, don't you think she deserved it? Oh, yes, yes. Well, look, Jack, uh, she sent in the winning letter. Well, you should have seen the letter I sent in. (laughs) My writers worked a week on it. (laughs) I think I'll fire them and hire uh, Mrs. Hubbard. (laughs) I know you're joking because you've kept it a real secret, and that I mean, and your writers will be the most surprised people of all. Look, even Mary didn't know about it, and that's the truth. (laughs) I believe you, Jack. By the way, Ralph. (laughs) Yes? Would you ask Mrs. Hubbard if she would like to also be a guest on my show. Of course, if she can't come, see if we can get Carson, Perry, and Scott. Yes, yeah. you know? <laughs> <Right>, yes, of course. <laughs> All right. I know she'd be delighted to be a guest on your show a week from tomorrow. Another program on the radio was called Bride and Groom. Here comes the bride. I'd like to introduce our bride and groom. And I see that you're both smiling and very happy. Oh, very happy indeed. (laughs) How long have you been looking forward to this day, Charles? Oh, about two years now. Let's get down to the most interesting part, which is this love story that brought you two together. Who's going to start? Oh, I think she should. Mm, I think so. I'm getting my way now anyway, aren't I? (laughs) And Charles hasn't seen anything yet. (laughs) On the radio show The Life of Riley, there was a character called Digger O'Dell. Who's that? It is I, Digby O'Dell. The friendly undertaker. And Fred Allen. One day on Vine Street, Benny overpowered me and introduced himself. <laughs> but enough about Mr. F.E. Boone, straight man. On the big screen, you could see the naked city. This is the city as it is. Hot summer pavements, the children at play, the buildings in their naked stone, the people without makeup. Ronald Coleman was nominated for Best Actor at the upcoming Oscars for his role in A Double Life. I'll come by later. Jack Benny and Mary, his wife in real life, were on the cover of the April edition of Radio Mirror magazine. This episode has a rare shout-out to the character actress Blanche Stewart, who you'll hear in an unusual role, and the man known for his voice characterizations, Mel Blanc. That's all, huh? If you'd like to contact me, you can email jackbennypodcast at gmail.com and take a moment to give This Day in Jack Benny a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And enjoy the show. 
The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. <laughs> Lucky Strike and Lucky Strike alone offers you important evidence gathered in the tobacco country by the world-famous Crossley Pole. This evidence reveals the smoking preference of auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen, the men who really know tobacco. Here's what the Crosley Poll found. For their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. These experts know their business. Their overwhelming preference for Lucky Strike, we believe, has a direct relationship to the quality tobacco we purchase for Lucky's and to the real, deep-down smoking enjoyment you may expect from fine tobacco. And when these veteran tobacco experts name Lucky Strike first choice for their own personal smoking enjoyment, then you know. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And fine tobacco is what counts in a cigarette. So smoke the smoke tobacco experts smoke Lucky Strike. Remember, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike first choice over any other brand. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as an emergency measure, at 2 o'clock this morning, the state of California went on daylight savings time, which means that in California, we started the day an hour earlier. This sudden change has even upset the barnyard animals. For well, this morning, when I opened my bedroom window at 5 o'clock, which was really 4 o'clock, I heard... <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> what a shame. It's their first argument since they appeared on Bride and Groom. <laughs> Continue, Don. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the change of time has certainly been confusing. So now we bring you a man who gets five o'clock shadow with his four o'clock tea, Jack Benny. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don... Now, what is the reason for this sudden change of time here in California? Well, Jack, because of the drought, there's been a power shortage, and the extra hour of daylight saves millions of kilowatt hours of electricity. Kilowatts? Yes. <laughs> yes, you see, we've had practically no rain, and it takes millions of tons of water rushing through the penstocks to turn the turbines which generate electricity. It is then run through the giant transformers in which it is converted into alternating current, and this current is sent throughout the state on a complicated network of cables. <laughs> Imagine them going through all that trouble Just so Rochester can burn my toast in the morning <laughs> But Don, this drought has really been something I don't ever remember it being so dry out Well, listen, this you'll never believe I mean, this sounds incredible But it's been so dry Last week, I passed a citrus grove And I saw an orange sucking a lemon <laughs> You know, the rain today nearly spoiled that joke. <laughs> you know, we nearly took it out. <laughs> but anyway, Don, I like the idea of broadcasting at 5 o'clock instead of 4 because it gives us more time. Oh, say, you... Mr. Benny, I heard you and Don talking oh, about... Oh, oh, hello, Dennis. Hello. Say, Mr. Benny, I heard you and Don talking oh, did about... did you just get here? Yeah. yeah, I heard you and Don talking about daylight savings time, and I'm in favor of it. Well, I'm glad you are, Dennis. You see, it... It gives us an extra hour of daylight every day. Yeah, I got up at 2 o'clock this morning. I turned my watch ahead 365 hours. What? I'm set, I'm set for the whole year. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you glad you made me repeat that, huh? <laughs> but Dennis, Dennis, look at me. I want to ask you one thing. Why do you have to be so silly? I mean, you, you're not a kid anymore. Look, you're approaching manhood. I am? <laughs> Certainly. And you have responsibilities. Look, Dennis, I really wanted to talk to you. Like, when I was your age, I was serious-minded, settled. I was supporting my family. 
I'd get up at four o'clock in the morning on a cold wintry day, pack my own lunch, and trudge 12 miles through the snow looking for work. Any kind of work. Selling paper, shoveling coal, digging ditches, anything. And at night, with the pennies I had earned clenched in my little fist... <laughs> Clenched in my little face. <laughs> I would drag my weary body home. And it was because of my efforts that my loved ones, my family, were able to keep body and soul together through that dreadful winter. What do you think of that? That was pretty good, but I still think they'll give it to Ronald Coleman. <laughs> Dennis, I was just telling you the story of my life. I wasn't trying to get an Academy Award. I didn't even make a picture, so I'm not eligible to win it. Oh, you're just being modest. I'm not being modest. I didn't make a picture last year. If I had made one, then I would be eligible to win the award. What a ham. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake, I don't know why I get into these things. Oh, speaking of pictures, Jack, I saw a great one last night. Really, Don, what'd you see? The Naked City. Ooh, what he said. <laughs> well, that does it. Mary, have you ever heard anyone so ridiculous? Mary, I'm talking to you. Jack, I don't come in till the next page. Well, come in now. I can't stand any more of this. <laughs> okay. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mary. Hey, fellas, <laughs> look who's here. Mary. Say, Jack. What? I'm all mixed up now. How come we're broadcasting at 3 o'clock instead of 4? We're not broadcasting at 3 o'clock. Look, it's 5 o'clock. You see, you're supposed to set your watch ahead. Ahead? Certainly. See, the idea is to get an extra hour of daylight, and the purpose of that is to conserve electricity. You see, there's been a drought, and it takes millions of tons of water rushing through the penstocks to turn the turbines which generate the electricity. It is then run through a giant... Ah, uh, uh, shut up! <laughs> Miss Stewart, you are employed on this program to read one line at the opening of the show, and that's all. I could have got a real chicken, but they wanted 90 cents a pound. <laughs> Now, please don't interrupt again. $643.70. Dennis, what are you figuring? Don Wilson at 90 cents a pound. <laughs> Dennis, go, Don, go sit on Dennis for a while so we can get on with the show, will you? Say, Jack, are you having the winner of the walking man contest on the program today? Yes, Mary. Ralph Edwards is going to bring her over later. Well, good, because I got a letter from Mom, and she says she's going to listen. Oh, a letter from your mother? Yeah. Here it is, right here. Well, what does the fearless Fosdick of Plainfield have to say? <laughs> I'll read it to you. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> My darling daughter, Mary, just a short note to tell you how thrilled we all were to find that Jack was the walking man yeah. when I heard the news. I got so excited that the cow is now wearing four Band-Aids. <laughs> Poor thing. <laughs> I should have realized Jack was the walking man as soon as I heard that clue where he played the violin. Oh. It sounded like a cat who already lost eight lives and didn't have a nickel to call Northside 777. <laughs> Mary, you, your mother can put a Band-Aid on that gag, too. Right? So much for Jack. This show was written in doo wah diddy I think. <laughs> so much for Jack. Now, here's the latest family news. Your sister, babe, has been studying dramatics... And this Wednesday, she will have an important part in the annual St. Patrick's Day play. Oh, babe. The play will open with St. Patrick chasing babe out of Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Say, babe should be good in that part. She never did have hips, you know. <laughs> Go ahead, babe. This part doesn't give Babe any lines to read, but she'll have a chance to hiss back at the audience. Good, good. <laughs> no other news except we had to take your Uncle Harry to a psychiatrist, as he thinks he's an avocado. <laughs> Every time I make a salad, he jumps in the bowl. What? <laughs> Once he did it without dressing. Mary. <laughs> salad dressing, that uh, is. Your Uncle Harry is really a character. I remember last year he thought he was a tube of shaving cream. Every time he left the house, he wanted you to screw his cap on. <laughs> what a guy. So we'll close now with all my love to you, your mother, Mama. Well, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> now, come on, Dennis. It's time for your song. What are you going to sing? Well, since Wednesday is St. Patrick's Day, I'm going to sing McNamara's band. Good, good. Go ahead.
Oh, me name is McNamara, I'm the leader of the band. Although we're few in numbers, we're the finest in the land. We play at wakes and weddings and at every fancy ball. And when we play to funerals, we play the march from Saul. Oh, the drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns they blaze away. The cards he pumps the old bassoon while I the pipes do play. Oh, Hennessy, Tennessee, toodles the flute and the music something grand. A credit to old Ireland is back to Mara's banner. <laughs> Right now we are rehearsing for a very swell affair The annual celebration, all the gentry will be there When the walking man to Ireland came, he took me by the hand Says he, I never saw the likes of McNamara's band Oh, the drums go bang and the cymbals clang and the horns they blaze away McCarthy pumps the old bassoon when I the pipes do play Oh, Hennessy, Tennessee, toodles the flute and the music something grand A credit to old Ireland is McNamara's band <laughs> Oh, me name is Uncle Julius and from Sweden I have come To play with McNamara's band and beat the big bass drum And when they march along the street the ladies tank come grand They shout there's Uncle Julius playing with an Irish band Oh, the drums go bang and the cymbals bang and the horns they blaze away McCarthy pumps the old bassoon while I the pipes do play Oh, Hennessy, Tennessee, toodles the flute and the music something grand A credit to old Ireland is McNamara's band Sure, it's the grandest band in the world And if anybody doesn't agree with me, just to be sociable I'll fight the best man in the house <coughs> And I'm not long for this world <laughs> A credit to old Ireland is McNamara's band <laughs> That was McNamara's band sung by that wee broth of a lad, Dennis Day. And Dennis, me by sure and be gutter, I'm proud of you, lad, as I am of me father, Shillelagh. But Dennis, seriously, I want to congratulate you and all the Irish on St. Patrick's Day. Thank you, and a good yontif to you, too. <laughs> what? Those zain mit glick in ich will the and später der Jarten der. Thank you, Dennis. And now... Oh, hold it, kids. Come in. Hey, Mr. Benny. Yes? I'm here to inform you that the results of Radio Mirror Magazine's nationwide poll have been tabulated, and you've won the title of America's favorite comedian. Well, thank you. Don't thank me. I voted for Mary's mother. <laughs> what? You're about as funny as an eviction notice. <laughs> Look, all right, you came here, you told me I won the award, now you can go. Yeah, just a minute. Is Don Wilson around? Why, yes. He's... Hey, wait a minute. Ask me that again, will you? Yeah, I said, is Don Wilson around? He's not only around, but he's a firm and a fully packed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, you may not be the walking man, but you step right into that one. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, mister, what are you doing? I'm setting my watch back an hour. I was happier then. <laughs> now may I see Mr. Wilson Oh, Don, come here a minute oh, Yes, what is it, Jack? Hey, Mr. Wilson, on behalf of Radio Mirror Magazine I want to congratulate you on being voted America's favorite radio announcer Little old me? Yes, little fat old you <laughs> The plaque we're presenting to you reads First prize awarded to Don Wilson Because of perfect diction and flawless enunciation Well, gosh, who won second prize? Speedy Riggs <laughs> The Effie Boone will be heartbroken. Uh, now, Mr. Benny, yeah. while I'm here, I'd like to take some pictures of the lady who won the walking man contest. Well, Ralph Edwards was supposed to bring her over, and they're not here yet. I can't understand what's keeping them. i better call up and see. Say, Maple, what is it, Gaitrez? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Benny's line is flashing. I wonder what high-button shoes wants now. <laughs> Well, answer it and find out. I'm loosening my girdle. You answer it. Okay. Hello? Hello, Mabel? No, this is Gertrude. Right now, Mabel is loosening... Gertrude! 
Gerda, will you try to get me Ralph Edwards, please? Just a moment. He wants I should get him Ralph Edwards. It's a good thing he talked to you. I'd have hung up on him. Why? Why? Jack took me out once, and when we got home, he didn't even kiss me goodnight. I can't understand it. I even brought my lips up close to him like this. Well, no wonder he didn't kiss you. What? I've seen a better pucker on a closed laundry bag. <laughs> Maybe it's because I don't paint my lips up so good. You know, it's hard with a thin brush. I think I'll start using a rubber stamp like you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you gotta be careful. Once at the office, I was in a hurry to make up. I grabbed the wrong stamp and my lips said, fragile, this end up. <laughs> anyway, I don't care what you say, Mabel. To me, Mr. Benny has a very sweet personality. Well, everyone is entitled to their own opinion. That's why you find so many things in fruitcake. <laughs> oh, that's a fine way to talk about Mr. Benny, especially now that he's famous as a walking man. What's so wonderful about that? He was walking when Paul Revere was riding. <laughs> Ain't it the truth? Operator, operator. I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, but Ralph Edwards doesn't answer. All right, thanks. Jack, wasn't Ralph Edwards home? No, but we finally got to use that telephone routine we've been saving since Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Four times we rehearsed it and had to take it out. Huh? Anyway, Ralph will be down here, and Don, until he gets where he might as well... Oh, hello, Phil. Hello, Jackson. How you live? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late, Jackson, but this change of time got me all mixed up Well, Phil, that's ridiculous All you had to do was set your watch ahead an hour Well, that ain't easy for me You see, my watch has got four hands Four hands? Sure, here, I'll show it to you Take a look at... How do you like that? I saw four hands last night <laughs> That I can understand Phil, are those your eyes or are you trying to flag down a freight train? Anyway, the change of time is no excuse. You've been with me for 12 years, and not once have you been on time for rehearsal. Jackson, if you had a band as lousy as mine, you wouldn't even get here for the show. <laughs> well, Phil, now that you really admit that what your band sounds like, why don't you let them go? I can't, Jackson. Can't do it. I got to deal with Petrillo where I have to take all the in-between musicians. In-between musicians? Yeah, when they're through with Guy Lombardo and not quite ready for Forest Lawn, I get them. <laughs> What a combination, Guy Lombardo and Forrest Lawn. <laughs> Phil, Phil, who makes their arrangements? Digger Odell. <laughs> oh, stop with those jokes. What do you Look. mean, jokes? There. Look what it says on the music. Where? Well, I'll be darned. May you rest 16 bars in peace. <laughs> Well, Phil, whether you like your orcs or not, we have to have a band number, so hit it, will you? <laughs> hey, what's that now? I just did that to wake up the audience. Well, Mr. Blank, you don't have to wake up the audience. You were hired just to do one crow at the opening of the program. You can go home now. But I'm talented. I can do a lot of things. Look, will a you A dog, please? a horse, a pig. Look, mister. <laughs> Look, I don't want all of them. Wait, wait, wait. I also imitate an electric organ. What? <laughs> now, cut that out. That's all, folks. Come on, Phil. Let's have a That was a short version. Why don't you... <laughs> why don't you let me know? I wish somebody let me know these things. Well, unclutch your fist. <laughs> that was I'm Looking Over a Four-Leaf Clover played by Phil Harris and his Ireland must be heaven because you can't hear his music there, orchestra. <laughs> And now, folks... Oh, say, Jack, I'm a little worried. Ralph Edwards hasn't shown up yet. Well, he ought to be here any minute. Meanwhile, Don, let's have a commercial. Oh, I can't do a commercial because the quartet isn't here. The quartet isn't here? Why not? Well, you see... <laughs> what are you laughing at, Mary? The quartet couldn't be here because the baritone got married. But what about the other three guys? They tied their shoes to the back of his car and forgot to get out of them. <laughs> 
You should have tied that joke to the back of Fred Allen. <laughs> Well, Don, even though the quartet isn't here, we gotta have a commercial, so it's up to you to do it. Oh, but Jack, how am I gonna get laughs reading a straight commercial? Well... Listen to this. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Yes, lucky strike means fine tobacco. Listen to what Mr. C. Burt Oliver, tobacco warehouseman of Lexington, Kentucky, says. I've been smoking luckies for... Oh, it's no use, Jack. You can't get laughs that way. But you can, Don, you can. I'll show you. You read the same thing, and while you're reading it, I'll put this silly-looking straw hat on your head. Straw hat? Yeah, like the ones they wear in the magazine ads. Now, go ahead and read it again, oh. and at a certain point, I'll put on the straw Okay, hat. okay. L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Yes, lucky strike means fine tobacco. Listen to what Mr. C. Burt Oliver, tobacco warehouseman of Lexington, Kentucky, says. Now, wait says. Till I put on the hat. Now, now <laughs> I've been smoking Luckies for nigh on to 20 years because I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike consistently. Fine, that's fine. That's right. That's naturally mild tobacco. Yes, sir. Why not? You bet. You all, L-S-M-F-T, L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strikes are so round, so firm, so fully packed. That's it. So free and easy on the draw. You see, draw. there you are, Don. You see how easy it is getting. Not only that, it'll be great on television. You mean you're signing me up? No, not you, Don. Just the hat. <laughs> Hey, Jack. Jack, your guests have arrived. My guests? Oh, yeah. good, good. I'll introduce them. Ladies and gentlemen, it isn't often that we have guest stars on this program, and for a very good reason. They, they cost, cost money. money. Besides that. <laughs> but tonight, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the master of ceremonies of radio's number one quiz show and the originator of the Walking Man contest. Here he is, Ralph Edwards. Hi, a truth. Hello, consequence. <laughs> well, I was worried that you wouldn't get here, so I called your house, but nobody answered. I can't understand it. Oh, but Jack, there was nobody in my house, so my phone couldn't be answered. Funny, I thought does does everything. <laughs> uh, maybe it was in the washing machine at the time. Maybe, but I'm sure glad you got here. Well, Ralph. so am I, Jack, because I want to take this opportunity of thanking you again for your splendid cooperation in the Walking Man contest, which raised over a million dollars. Whoops. <laughs> To be exact, we raised almost... Whoops, whoops. Yes. Oh, two million. Oh, good. <laughs> and all this money, Jack, went to the American Heart Association. Well, that's certainly a worthy cause. Say, Ralph, do you mind if I ask you a question? I know, Mary. What is it? Well, in your four contests, Mr. Hush, Mrs. Hush, Miss Hush, and the Walking Mush, I mean... <laughs> I mean, mash. I mean, mish. The, the walking, walking man. man. <laughs> uh, what was the total value of all the prizes given away? Oh, I'd say around a hundred thousand dollars. Gee. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, since I've been running these contests, I've been the happiest guy in the world. I only wish I could give more prizes. Gives me such a wonderful feeling giving things away. Well, to each his own. <laughs> But Ralph, Ralph, while you're on the subject uh, of money, don't you think I should receive something for my efforts on your program the last eight weeks? Well, Jack, I know it was I... for charity, Ralph, but for eight weeks I walked and walked and walked. Yeah, I know, Jack, and I have here a check for you for six dollars and thirty cents. Six dollars and thirty cents? How'd you arrive at that figure? Uh, Fifteen cents for the first quarter mile and twenty cents a mile thereafter. <laughs> So that's why you strap that meter on my back. If I'd have known that, I'd have taken longer steps, you know. Jack, I don't know. I, I should put on that straw hat for that yeah. joke, you know. <laughs> no, but I can't understand you at all. I always thought it was just a gag, but it, it seems the only thing you can think of is money. So what, Ralph? There's nothing wrong with liking money. Oh, but Jack, think of it this way. Money isn't everything. Supposing you were the only person in the whole world, and all the diamonds, all the wealth, all the gold was yours. Now, wouldn't you be lonely... Lonely but loaded. <laughs> I'd be so nice to come home to. <laughs> well, I may as well get to the real reason for my being here today. I brought along as my special guest tonight, uh, Mrs. Florence Hubbard of Chicago. May I introduce her to you and your listeners? Certainly, Ralph. Go right ahead. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to present the winner of the Walking Man contest, Mrs. Florence Hubbard of Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> Uh, 
And Mrs. Hubbard, I want to welcome you to this program. Thank you, Mr. Benny. You know, I read in the paper that after you won the Walking Man contest, all your old friends, people you haven't heard from in years, came around to see you. That's right. Gee, that must have been thrilling. Who was the very first person to visit you after you won? The income tax man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'll bet. I'll bet after the income tax man got there, Mrs. Hubbard's cupboard was bare. <laughs> For that, I left Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us, Miss Hubbard, uh, how did you discover that Jack was the walking man? It was simple. The footsteps were familiar. You mean you've heard his footsteps before? No, but I realized they were made by a person around my own age. <laughs> <laughs> now, just a second, uh, Mrs. Hubbard. Uh, how, how old are you? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Gee, you look a little older. Huh? I am, but <laughs> but they gave me a new birth certificate as one of the prizes. Oh, oh, I see. <laughs> you know, this is really quite a coincidence. I happen to be thirty-nine years old myself. Really? Hmm? What contest did you win? <laughs> no, no contest. You see, that's really my age. But you look much. Uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Hubbard. Uh... <laughs> Remember, you're a guest here. Yeah, yeah. Now, Mrs. Hubbard, tell me, were you born in Chicago? Uh, no, I was born in the South. Really? Where? A little place called Duwad Ditty. <laughs> well, Mrs. Hubbard, now that you've had all this good luck, I suppose you'll be thinking of getting married again, huh? Won't you? No. Now that I've all these prizes, I feel that I don't need anyone. But, but won't you be lonely? Lonely, but loaded. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I know what you mean. Well, it's all be nice you to come on my program tonight. Thanks very much, and congratulations. Independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike first choice. Lucky Strike, first choice over any other brand. American. That statement is backed up by an impartial Crosley poll just completed in 11 southern tobacco states. This poll, taken among tobacco experts, reveals the smoking preference of the men who really know tobacco. Yes, for their own personal smoking enjoyment, independent tobacco experts again name Lucky Strike, first choice. Lucky Strike, First choice over any other brand. These are the experts, auctioneers, buyers, and warehousemen. And we believe their overwhelming preference for Lucky Strike has a direct relationship to the quality tobacco we purchase for Lucky's. You've heard the poll results. Now listen to what Mr. Fred Evans, a veteran tobacco buyer for 25 years, recently said. At every auction I've attended, I've seen the makers of Lucky Strike buy fine, ripe Miller tobacco. I've smoked Lucky's 19 years. So for your own real, deep-down smoking enjoyment, remember... L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Ralph Edwards and Mrs. Hubbard for being with us today. Mrs. Hubbard appeared to the courtesy of uh, Carson Peary and Scott. <laughs> also on our program tonight were Mel Blank, Frank Nelson, B. Benadaret, Sarah Berner, Blanche Stewart. I appeared to the courtesy of Penicillin tonight. Good night, folks. <laughs> this is NBC, the national broadcasting company. Oh.